Hi, it's Liam from Off-Road CC here, and today we're going to review the Merida Big Trail 600. The Big Trail is Merida's trail-ready hardtail that comes with a rich range of four models. It starts off at £800 for the Big Trail 200 and goes up to £1,500 for the 600 model, and that's the bike that we're going to review today. But before we get any further, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content just like this. So let's start off with what you get for your £1,500. The Big Trail 600 comes with a Mazoki's Bomber Z2 fork, and as a budget friendly fork it's really difficult to fault and it's great to see on a bike like this. It's simple with just a rebounding compression adjustment, but a supple, well damped and plenty stiff enough. It also accepts volume spaces, so it's got even more tunability. Moving on we get a Shimano Dior 12 speed drivetrain and race race cranks. Slowing the bike down, we've got a pair of Shimano M4 100 brakes. And for the money, it would be nice to see something from Shimano's dual lineup, but these brakes have plenty of power on offer. They're just missing the nice levers that you get on the Shimano Dior's and the Servo Wave Tech. As for the wheels, they come from Merida and they come in the form of the Expert TR rims laced with Shimano hubs. Those are then wrapped with a pair of Maxxis dissector tyres that come in 2.4 inch widths and XO casings. The Big Trail then gets a fairly modern cockpit with a 780mm bar that has a 35mm clamp diameter. It then gets a pair of lock-on grips which is really nice to see, but unfortunately on this bike they're not the best in the world. They're grippy, but they are quite hard and they don't exactly ooze quality. Then it would be rude to forget the Big Trail's Merida Comp TR dropper post. On our size extra large, it comes with 150mm of drop and that's the same for all sizes apart from the small which gets 125mm of drop. So that's the kit that you get on the Big Trail, but the frame itself also comes with a host of neat features. The space for up to two bottles in the front triangle along with some bosses underneath the top tube for some extra carrying potential. Along with those, there are hidden rack, fender and kickstand mounts. And that's great if you'd like to use this bike as a commuter as well as something that's ready to hit the trails. Finally, there's a threaded BB, internal cable routing throughout, and there's a chain guide already installed. Something that I really like about the Big Trail 600 is the included multi-tool that's hidden underneath the saddle. There's also the rear axle lever that doubles as a 4 and 6 mil Allen key, and that's great if you're constantly transporting the bike and taking the wheels out to put it into your car. Of course, if you're new to mountain biking, these multi-tools already have you covered to sort out a variety of trailside mishaps from the very start. So before we get any further, I'd like to mention that this is an extra large frame. Normally I'd sit between a medium and a large and often go for a large frame because I prefer a longer bike. I wouldn't ever consider an extra large frame. However, this bike comes with a super short 450mm seat tube. Not only does that allow me to fit on the bike, but I'm also able to make the most of the 150mm of dropper post travel. For anybody interested, I'm around 5'10 and have a 78cm inseam. This means that sizing up is a very viable option if you're after a longer hardtail. However, if you're a much taller rider, there's no double XL frame available yet. Now onto the ride. This bike's geometry makes for an impressively capable ride that unlocks a huge variety of trails. This bike comes with a 75.5 degree seat tube angle, which offers a comfy position for both steep climbs and mellow trundles. It places right away at an efficient point over the pedals without feeling too far over the front of the bike, so that means that you can tackle techie climbs with ease. Over more flowy trails, those big wheels get to work, picking up plenty of speed, while the 66.5mm bottom bracket drop and the 435mm chainstays result in a ride that's lively and super flickable through tight successive corners, and it's great fun on more chill trails. Although I did find a couple of niggles with this bike's geometry. The 120mm head tube is a little bit too tall for me. If you are a taller rider, you'll be absolutely fine with this, but if you're around my height, you want to be slamming that stem pro roadie style. Speaking of the stem, 50mm did feel a little bit too long for me, but again, if you're in this bike's actual size range, you'll be fine with this, but either way, it's a cheap and easy fix. 
but point the big trail downhill and it becomes very clear how truly versatile this bike is. Its 475mm reach and 65.5 degree head tube angle places the front wheel reasonably far in front of you. This gives the bike plenty of stability at speed but it also gives you loads of room to move around. This is super welcome when the trail gets steep because it offers a whole load of control and predictability where you really need it. And that short seat tube that I mentioned earlier only adds to this bike's descending prowess. With the saddle dropped, you're left with loads of room to shift your weight towards the back of the bike, which is super helpful on those steep rolls. The extra large frame geometry paired with the 29 inch wheels both do a lot to tame down chunky trails. Along with 140mm travel from that Mazoki Bomber fork, they all work together to maintain momentum as you plough through those rock gardens. And this is where the Mizuki Bomber Z2 really starts to shine. It's lovely and soft when it soaks up a good amount of small bumps and it remains nicely composed over big hits, stopping you from pinging offline. During my time on the big trail, Mike riding blended really soggy trails with proper hard trails. And for the most part, I felt that the sector at the front didn't really cut it. It didn't lend enough grip or support in soft corners to really push the front end. So I swapped it for a Maxxis Minion DHF and that solved all of the problems. It still rolled really nicely, but I could push it into soft corners with much more confidence and I was rewarded with much more grip. That doesn't mean that the Dissector is a bad tire in any way. If you're riding over dry trails or better groomed bike parky trails, it will suit this bike really nicely. So that's how the big trail rides. So now let's move on to the bike's value. And in this price range, it comes against some very stiff competition. First off, there's the Ragley Big Al 1.0, and that sits at £1,400, £100 pounds cheaper than this bike. It gets a slightly more aggressive geometry, but it still gets that Mizuki Z2 Bomber fork, but that is where the similarities end. The Big Al gets WTB rims laced to new proof hubs, a Brand X dropper post and Shimano Dior M6100 brakes but it gets a 1 by 11 speed drivetrain compared to this bike's 12 speed. Then there's Vitus Sentia VR, which is infamously good value. It gets much of the kit that you find on the Ragley Big Owl, but it costs just £1,200. However, its geometry is slightly more conservative and it loses 10 mil of travel on the fork. While both of those bikes are definitely cheaper than the Big 12600, neither of them come with the built-in multi-tools that we get on this bike, and both of them have much taller seat tubes, so sizing up just isn't quite as possible. To round off, the Merida Big Trail 600 is a bike that can appeal to a lot of people. For new riders, it's shaped well enough to keep you happy as the skills grow, and for more experienced riders, it's already happy to be thrown down more challenging trails. It's also a solid bed for upgrades thanks to its modern build. Although it's a bit pricier than its competition, the Merida Big Trail 600 definitely stacks up thanks to its brilliant geometry and very usable build kit. It's welcome with upsizing, and that geometry makes for a very capable machine. So that's it for the Merida Big Trail 600. If you'd like to see more content and reviews just like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have a Merida Big Trail, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you'd like to see a more detailed look at this bike, head on over to www.off.road.cc. Thanks very much for watching.